800-273-6807 to see how fast you can get out of debt. These noticeables. It's that fresh. Hi, I'm Regan Burns, and I know that Whoopi Goldberg's real name is Karen Johnson. Before Whoopi, however, she considered yippee and hooray and whoo, there it is. I'm Lonnie Love, and I know that hip-hop star Usher's real name is Justin Williams. Usher wanted the glamorous name of a movie theater employee. He can show me to my seat anytime. Hi, I'm superstar Tim Meadows, and I know that recording artist Seal's real name is Sal Laveau. He thought Seal was hipper than Sal, plus he can balance a beach ball on his nose. <laughs> Who's got it right? You'll find out tonight on Balderdash! Starring Elaine Boozler! Thank you very much, thank you everybody, and welcome to Balderdash. Balderdash is the only game show in history that is played completely by mice. <laughs> no. That's Balderdash. See, that's what we do around here. Try and figure out what's true and what's not true. Here's something that's true. We have three fabulously funny people to make you laugh tonight. Give it up for our good friend, Regan Burns. <laughs> Lonnie Love. And Tim Meadows. Woo! Okay, Regan Burns had the true answer to our opening question. Whoopi Goldberg's real name is Karen Johnson. She is also the only person in the history of show business that ever wanted a name that actually sounded more Jewish. <laughs> Other two stars were full of balderdash, and that is our contestants' challenge tonight. They have to figure out which of our celebrities may be telling the truth or who may be full of balderdash. A correct wager on balderdash pays off at one to one, and a correct wager on the truth pays off at two to one. Okay? To get you both started, we're going to give you each 250 points so you can bet. And to help you decide how much to bet, I'll tell you that our first category tonight is hmm, baffling books. Baffling books. So lock in your wagers and choose either truth or balderdash. Hello, Chris. Hi. Hi, what'd you bet? Uh, I bet 250 on balderdash. On balderdash. And Erin? I bet 185 on balderdash. 185, both for balderdash. Those are the wagers. Here we go, panel. Diet books are so popular, there seems to be a new one every six months. Or just about the time everyone gains the weight back and needs a new diet. <laughs> As for me, I'm convinced all diet books are balderdash, but... One of these three was actually a real diet book, and we will start with the lovely, svelte, talented, and delicious, oh, Reagan Burns. Elaine, I believe it says in the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal, mm -hmm. unless they're really, really fat. Yeah. <laughs> Then they're more equal. Even more so. Which brings us to the Founding Father's Diet Book. Now, when we think sexy, we obviously think of Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> but their trick to staying slim was actually very simple. Tybo. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, smaller bites. They said take smaller bites, and they wrote about it in the Founding Father's Diet Book. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> the beautiful Lonnie Lowe. Elaine, the name of the book is called Diets Are Girls' Best Friend. Hmm. And as you can tell, I have no best friends. <laughs> well, I can be your best friend because I don't have any either, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. so. But that is the name of the book, Diets Are Girls' Best Friend. Okay, and the very handsome and very funny good friend of the show, Tim Meadows. Well, this one is a weird title, but it's called Martini and Whipped Cream. It's a weird diet. I think the target audience was Hugh Hefner. Yeah. Um, apparently, you know, smoking a pipe in a jacuzzi didn't burn enough carbs. <laughs> but the name of the book was Martini and Whipped Cream. Martini, it sounds like we could get some good friends on that diet. Okay, so Tim Meadows, to recap, says that the real diet book was called Martinis and Whipped Cream. Lonnie Love says it's diets are a girl's best friend. And Regan Burns thinks it's the founding father's diet. You both chose Balderdash. Pick somebody you don't believe.
Okay, Rick, who'd you go with? Uh, I went with Tim Meadows for 250 for Boulder Dash. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. <laughs> Okay, Erin? I also went with Tim Meadows, and I bet 185 for Balderdash. Okay, let's see what was actually a diet book. That is bad news for both of you. Hard to believe, isn't it? But martinis and whipped cream. You almost had to believe that was the real one because it was so ridiculous. I know, well, you're both going to lose your points on that one. Unfortunately, Chris, you bet it all. So you're down to zero. Aaron, you're at 65. Uh, it was an interesting first round. Hey, here's something you'd never hear in a Mike Tyson fight. Come on back for round two. <laughs> Live with men for symptom-free days. It's time for more of our show. Here again is Elaine Kugler. Let's meet our contestants. This is Chris Weinrich from... I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm currently a 7th grade teacher at Salem Lutheran School, and I enjoy going fishing in Alaska with my family. Congratulations! Erin Cummings. Hi, I'm originally Hi. from Huntsville, Texas, mm -hmm. and I work as a massage therapist at a chiropractic center. Very nice. <laughs> you know, uh, when you said that, Regan over there blushed a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think his back's starting to hurt. Okay, <laughs> we're in round two. This is uh, uh, a round where we're going to up the ante. We're giving you each an additional 500 points, which means you can bet, and you have to bet at least 250 points on each of the following questions. The first category is... TV songs, TV songs. So make your wagers and choose either truth or bold today. Okay, Mr. Fisherman in Alaska. Chris, what did you wager? I wagered 300 points on truth. Oh, he's trying to catch up. 300 on truth, two to one payoff. Big, big. Erin? I wagered 295 points on Balderdash. Okay, she's right behind you there. Here we go, panel. You might remember the Smelly Cat song from the sitcom Friends, but Phoebe, <laughs> I guess they do, Phoebe sang some other great tunes as well, including one of these, and we'll start with the lovely and beautiful Lonnie Love. One of my favorite episodes was when Phoebe developed a crush on a guy that had a coma, Ooh. and she developed a song called My Coma Guy. Aww. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what the good thing about um, dating a guy in a coma? No. You n always know where he's at. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no fighting. Tim Meadows. Well, uh, in one episode, uh, Ross took Phoebe to his son's class, and she accidentally killed the class's gerbil. Oh. And so to, to lift the mood in the class, she wrote a song called Dead Gerbil. Oh. And this is a coincidence, because Dead Gerbil reminds me of William Hung's singing voice, actually. <laughs> Dead gerbil, says Tim Meadows, and Regan Burns. The song was urinal cake. Oh. Uh, Phoebe sang this after Chandler explained to her what a urinal cake was used for. I, too, until just recently, learned what a urinal cake is used for. And I now know that rice cakes do not come in the flavor pine. <laughs> You do have to admit a urinal cake is still a better Christmas gift than a fruit cake. That's true. This yeah. is true. Okay, Regan Byrne says it's urinal cake. Lonnie Love says it's coma guy song. And Tim Meadows says it's dead gerbil. Balderdash, truce, pick a star. I don't know this one at all. Chris, who'd you go with? Um, I went with Lonnie Love coma guy songs. I think I remember that on the show. That sounds pretty Phoebe-ish, doesn't it? Okay, Erin? I actually went with Lonnie Love for Balderdash because Ooh. I think I remember the dead gerbil song. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what the real song was. <laughs> oh, it was Lonnie Love for Balderdash. Sorry, she had the truth. You said Balderdash, you're going to lose that one. You get to catch up a little bit here. You had truth for Lonnie Love. That's a two to one payoff. You went from zero to 1100 in under 60 seconds. Yes. <laughs> Swine Ricky Steel Belted Fuel Injected Radio Double Tire Guy and 270 for you, Aaron. Plenty of time to catch up, and we're going to go right to it and give you that chance. Here we go. Next category Weird Words. Locking your wagers, choose either truth or balderdash on weird words. All locked in. Okay, Chris, what'd you go with? 
I went with Balderdash for 350. Okay, Balderdash 350. Erin? I went with Balderdash for 250. Okay, here we go, panel. Time for another trip to the Dictionary of the Obscure as we examine the meaning of the word parasigmatism. Thank you. Parasigmatism. And we shall start with the lovely Tim Meadows. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. I'll take that lovely and run with it. <laughs> um, Parasigmatism. Parasigmatism is is a uh, psych deep psychological need to suck up to other people. Oh. Yeah. It's also known as the Ryan Seacrest disease. Oh. It's a psychological disease uh, need to suck up to people. Okay, Regan Burns. Parasigmatism. <laughs> <laughs> and that you have to say it with the or it's not. I did pledge that sorority. Uh, it is. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. It's the technical term for double vision. Oh. I, uh, I actually thought I had a little bit of it last week, but it turns out I was just watching an Olsen Twins movie. Uh. <laughs> Regan Burns says it's the technical term for double vision. Okay, Lonnie, love. Give us some class to the proceedings, will you? Everyone knows that parasigmatism... <laughs> Everyone knows that parasigmatism is the inability to pronounce the letter S. Oh. It's true. I heard it from Ooperman. Oh. <laughs> okay, Lonnie Love says it's the inability to pronounce the letter S. Tim Meadows says it's the psychological need to suck up. And Regan Burns, uh, which is also with the state flower of California, uh, Regan Burns says it's the technical term for double vision. So, both pick Balderdash, pick the story you don't believe. All right, Chris, who'd you go with? Uh, I went with Regan Burns because I don't believe the word double is in the name. Right. Erin? I went with Lonnie Love because it just didn't sound right to me. Well, that's a good reason. Let's find out what parasigmatism means. Oh, Lonnie Love, that's unbelievable. You're going to lose that 250 because you get bombed at. And Lonnie Love was telling the truth. You chose Reagan for Balderdash. That's going to pay off for you. You are now up to 1450. You're down to 20. See how fast they change places. However, it ain't over yet. You're going to have a chance to catch up in the next round. And we shall be back in exactly one second, Balderdash. Closed captioning provided by. Online now at trimune.com. Feel better faster with Trimune. It's time for more Balderdash. Let's join Elaine Boozler. Well, Chris has made a spectacular comeback, but Erin, this is your last chance to catch up and win a fabulous prize. This is our determining round. We're going to add a thousand points to each of your scores. You must bet at least half your bank. In this, and the hardest part of all, you must bet on truth only. Still a two to one payoff, truth only. The category is bizarre photos. Bizarre photos, make your wagers for truth only. And of course, in this round, we don't divulge what you chose until the end of the round. Panel, take a look at the guy with the chicken head in his lap. How often have you said that? Okay. What's going on in this photo? And I shudder to have to start with Regan Burns. This guy is part of the Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. <laughs> yep. It honors a chicken that indeed lived a full year after its head was cut off. And you're probably wondering what a chicken with its head cut off does for a year. It ran the CIA. Oh. <laughs> It sounds like truth to me. Regan Burns says it's Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. What does Lonnie Love say? He's actually participating in a West Virginia contest called the Chicken Crossing the Road Contest. And what he's doing is acting out the actual joke. I mean, the real reason why the chicken crossed the road is to get out of West Virginia. <laughs> Lonnie Love says it's the chicken crossing the road joke contest. We will say goodbye to our West Virginia affiliate, Tim Meadows. <laughs> yes, um, well, this photo is from the mascot marathon in oh. Oklahoma. Sure. And uh, the winner gets to work as a mascot for the Red Hawks baseball team. And uh, this guy just found out the meaning of mug night. 
Oh, Mug Knight. Well, he's still three, cooler two, than Mr. Met. Three, four. Yes. He is. Is he cooler than Mr. Met? I'll take him anytime. Okay, Tim Meadows says it's the mascot marathon. Lonnie Love says it's the chicken crossing the road joke contest. And Regan Burns says it's Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. You're looking for truth here. I'm glad it's not me. Pick a star. We also will not reveal your choices till the end of the round. Let's see what the actual thing going on here was. Oh, golly. Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. It was all true, including the fact that he did run the CIA for a year. Unbelievable. But, Erin, you were way behind. You had to get this one. How much did you wager and who did you choose? I wagered it all on Tim Meadows. That's not good. You're down to zero. Unless he wagered more than he actually had, he may be the winner. Chris, who did you go with and uh, how much did you wager? I wagered 1,233 points on Tim Meadows. Well, you're the winner no matter what. I'm sorry, Aaron. It's, uh, you played well and we're going to have to say goodbye Thank to you. you. It was very nice to meet you. Champ! You're the champ! You're going to need a star to help you play it. Who would you like to choose to play with you? I'm going to go with Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows is going to help him play the ball with that star. We're going to meet you down there. Now you know it's not a Tyson fight. Come on back for round four. Balderdash is looking for contestants. If you live in or plan to visit the Los Angeles area, please call 323-762-7126 for audition information. There's lots more Balderdash to come, so stay tuned. Balderdash continues. Once again, here's our host, Elaine Boozler. Hey, we're here with Chris, our champion, has chosen Tim Meadows to help him through the big Balderdash barrage. You are going to win a fabulous prize. Choice of two. We'll see what you get. Here's John Machida to tell you about the first one. It's a compact home stereo system. Enjoy listening to your favorite music on this stylish JVC mini stereo unit and power system for ultimate high-quality sound from the good guys. Or you could win the grand prize. Here's John to tell you about that. It's a vacation in Mazatlan. You and a guest will be treated to deluxe accommodations at the luxurious El Cid Marina Beach Hotel in beautiful Mazatlan. Enjoy fine dining and relaxing spa treatment, plus explore their magnificent pools that feature underwater caves. El Cid Resorts, let us conquer you Mexico style. Very nice. So how do you get to Mazatlan? Well, there are ten letters in the word Balderdash. Behind nine of those letters is the stereo set. Behind one of those letters is a trip to Mazatlan. How do we narrow the field? We're going to play a game for 45 seconds. I'm going to read you sentences that end in total Balderdash. You have to correct them to make them true. Okay? For instance, if I said Shaquille O'Neal plays professional water polo, you would say... Basketball. There you go. If you don't know it, say pass. Tim will have a chance. If you don't know it, say pass. We'll go to the next one. For every correct answer, we're going to take away one of those Balderdash letters with the stereo equipment behind it, getting closer and closer, closing in on Mazatlan. You got it? Got it. Okay, we're about to play the big Balderdash barrage. <laughs> Let's put 45 seconds on the clock. And the clock starts now. Shirley Temple sang on the good ship Exxon Valdez. Lollipop. Yes. The saying goes, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw nudist parties. Rocks. No, stones. Venus was the Roman goddess of B-movies. Pass. Venus. Love. Love. Love, yes, love. Jennifer Lopez's latest husband is old what's-his-name. Pass. Um, Mark Anthony. Yes. Professor Plum and Colonel Mustard are in the game of Deli Land. The clue. Yes. Coming from Japan, miniature decorative trees are called squirts. Pass. Bonsai. Yes. The Marquise of Queensberry rules govern cross-dressing. Pass. Uh, ch chess. Boxing. The hero of Catcher in the Rye was Abe Vigoda. Pass. Uh, holding Caulfield. Yes. The world's largest bird is Larry Bird. Ostrich. Ostrich. Yes. Great. Seven right. Good job, both of you did amazing. That was great. Okay, you got seven right. We're going to take seven letters away from the word balderdash. Watch those seven letters disappear. We're left with three letters. Uh, one of them has Mazatlan, the other two is the equipment. Pick a letter, let's see what you've won. I was staring at R the whole time. I'm going with R. Hey, let's see what's behind R. 
Rescued pets make the best pets, and that's the truth. We'll see you next time on Baldur's. Some of our contestants may receive the following. Enjoy a great selection from the complete line of Mattel games and puzzles, including Seen It, Name Dropper, Uno Attack, and of course, the latest edition of Balderdash. Someone dies from tobacco. Cigarettes will eventually kill one third of smokers. Now that's reality. Watch as 10 smokers face their addiction and are forced to quit cold turkey. There's one person off cigarettes. That's one lifespan. Only on I. Oh.